Hey, good morning. Happy Wednesday. I'm back. We're back. It's been a couple of weeks. Actually, the last two Wednesdays, I haven't had a coffee with PC with you guys. That's because I was on vacation. And so we came back uh, actually last Wednesday, but with the traveling, everything didn't get to it. So here we are again. First Wednesday of May, getting ready to spend a few minutes with you. I've got my cup of coffee, found uh, a new brew. We went to Hilton Head, South Carolina. That's where we spent about a week up there, actually four, five nights, I think. Not quite a week, a week when you count all the traveling back and forth. But five nights up there, one of the, the places we went for breakfast had a, uh, well, a very nice brew of coffee. And I asked and they said, yep, they, they do have a, uh, some for be whole bean and so I got some actually they let me try two or three different cups over the course of breakfast which you know don't have to twist my arm trying some different coffees and and really like this one uh low acidity is what kind of was the 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 factor about it that that they touted and really the nice flavor and so I'm enjoying that it doesn't sit so hard on my stomach so I'm having a little extra cup this morning I think they call it bohemian roast I don't know why but hey there it is, very nice, enjoying my coffee, reminding me of our time away, and it was a very much appreciated time away, very much needed time away. You know, we just came out of in early April, the Easter season, and all that goes in from, from April 1st with our kids' event through the next week or so, lots of things going on, and so, um, you know, after that, it was really great to get away, to, to, to be just Denise and I got able to go and, and spend that time together, just relaxing. Uh, we saw some great things there. Uh, got to see, took several trails, saw a couple of rookeries, which is where um, birds were nesting. We saw, uh, let's see, wood storks and um, great egrets and little blue herons, and, and they were building their nest. A couple of them already had babies in the nest, so we got pictures of the mamas feeding the babies, and, and uh, Denise actually found uh, a camera for an osprey nest that um, they laid eggs, the, the, the osprey laid eggs, I think the day we came back or the day after, so she's going to keep watching that. It was at one of the places on Hilton Head, too, so we love birding, we love the outdoors, and we did a lot of that. Mostly we tried to get some rest, and that's what really what I wanted to, to talk about this morning just briefly, because I was reminded over that period of time how important rest is. You know, as well as I do, we live in a very fast-paced world. We live in a go, go, go kind of society. Part of it, yes, is the advent of handheld technology that keeps us always connected. Um, you know, I was talking to, to a pastor who remembers the generation before. Actually, I early in my ministry, we didn't have cell phones. I got one toward the end of my time in Tampa before we moved down here, so 20-something years ago. But where if you weren't at your house or in the office, Nobody could get in touch with you. You left a message or, or whatever the case may be. And nowadays, because they're, they're with us all the time, the access that we have to each other is immediate, is the expectation, but more than just the access to each other through, through our phones, either by call or text or email, is also the access to so much around us. We are overwhelmed and overloaded and probably overstressed because of all of that sort of thing. So the pace of our lives, the, the, the technology advances that allow us to do more things quickly has really kind of come in. And, and the thing that, that is a reality in our culture is that's seen as a great virtue to be productive, to be successful. The more you can juggle, the more it seems like people will throw on you. Now that's that's true in church world. We have folks in churches that come in and and, and you notice, uh, we've talked about it at our church, we have people that are on a, a whole bunch of, of ministry teams or committees. Everywhere you look, there's those few people, you know, if there's a, if there's a this, they're there. If there's a that, they're there. And I think that's always been the case. In, in church world, much to our chagrin, because we valued and, and it seeped into, I would say, our view of even how churches work uh, to our detriment. Because what we see in scripture is time and time again, even the pattern of creation, God designed us as human beings in his image for rest. Even in the seven day uh, creation story in Genesis, the seventh day is that day of rest. Not because God was tired, not because God was exhausted, nothing ever exhausts the Almighty God, but to set for us his created 
image bearers, a pattern that rest is important. And too often because of the nature of our world and because of the value we place on things like how fast you can get things done, how productive you can be, we think of rest as a negative thing instead of the reality that it's programmed into our design by God and commanded to us in the scriptures by God. In fact, Jesus, can we agree if anybody in history had a lot to accomplish in a very short amount of time, it was Jesus. I mean, all he had to do was save humanity. All he had to do was make atonement for sin so that there could be this thing called salvation, forgiveness, and eternal life for us. That's quite a lot more important work than you or I will ever find ourselves doing. And yet, even in the account of his life, he would often withdraw to a lonely place. He would set aside, he even told his disciples, hey, let's come over here and let's rest. Why? To set the example uh, that, that rest should be such an important part of our lives. It should be built in to the pattern of our lives. But I think uh, maybe the story that I think of in, in the gospel accounts is in Luke chapter 10 that illustrates this and, and illustrates the tension between it is in Luke chapter 10, uh, when Jesus goes to visit some of his favorite people, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus at Bethany. And when he goes there, uh, he and his disciples are on their way. They came to the village, it says in verse 38, when Martha opened her home to them. So you've got Jesus and his disciples. So that's, that's quite a few people we've got coming into Martha's home. If you've ever hosted a dinner party for 10, 12, 14 people, you know, that's a lot of work. There's a lot of things that have to be done to prepare and to execute that. And, and it says in that that her sister Mary, rather than helping her be busy, it says she, she sat at the Lord at Jesus' feet listening to what he said. And Martha, who was so busy with the preparations, she got a little frustrated. She came to Jesus and she says to Jesus, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Have you ever felt like that? Like you're busy, you're busy, you got a thousand things to do and just look around, is anybody gonna help me? This is Martha. This is the Martha spirit in us that there's so much to do and we have to push, push, push and do, do, do. And we don't have any time for, for downtime or off time. You know, our, our, our working days just kind of bleed over. Sometimes we wake up and get to work before we even get to the office. And because of the nature of technology, we can take our work home with us. Us. And, and and we can work. Denise will tell you, I have a habit of, of seven days a week finding my way over to the office to spend some time here doing this, that, or the other. Maybe you have those same things because there's always stuff to be done. There was stuff that Mary could have helped Martha do. But Jesus, when he's confronted with this, the frustration of Martha, and is asked specifically to tell Mary to help Martha, Jesus says this, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. Obviously, does that, by the way, does that describe you? Does me sometimes. I can worry, I can fret, I can get the list of things that has to be done and the things I wanna accomplish in a day and maybe there's a distraction or maybe something takes longer than I thought. And so at the end of the day, I'm like, I didn't do all that I needed to do. And now, now I begin to, to kind of stew over, well, do I need to, to get up early? Do I need to go in early? Do I need to go over there now? It's, it's late and all that sort of thing. Yeah, we, we get worried and upset by many things. And, and then Jesus says this, but there is only one thing that is needed. There's only one thing that is needed, and Mary has chosen the better. Mary made a better choice, and I'm not going to take it away from her. What was Mary doing? She was resting at the feet of Jesus. She was sitting and listening to her Savior. How important do you think Jesus was making that in that moment? How important was he trying to stress to Martha, who was taking all of this responsibility, necessary things that had to be done, we would say, but saying, no, 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 in this moment, there's really only one thing needed. And Mary, she's doing that one thing. We need to be reminded of that. We need to be reminded of that. In fact, Jesus says in Matthew uh, chapter 11, let me back up a little bit. It, it's an interesting um, passage, and, and it's actually the basis of a book uh, that was written. Uh, I've read most of the book. It's called Gentle and Lowly, based upon this section at the end of Matthew chapter 11. Um, Jesus says in Matthew 11, 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Is that you? Are you weary? Are you tired? Do you feel overwhelmed? 
Do you feel like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders, whether it's responsibilities at home, responsibilities in your job, uh, community activities that you've gotten involved in and have responsibilities in those, uh, kids activities that are pulling you a thousand directions uh, in the afternoons and evenings and on the weekends? Do you feel weary, tired, and burdened? Well, Jesus says, come to me and I will give you, there's our word, rest. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And then the title of the, the book comes from this section. For I am gentle and humble or lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Gee, this is not a, a theme that pops up one verse in, in the scriptures and then we forget about it. You could, you could take the time, get a, a concordance, maybe use that, that phone in your hand. You have the Bible app. Do the concordance search for the word rest. Or if you have uh, the website, BibleGateway.com has a really powerful search engine. You can search and it'll list on the side every um, book of the Bible that that word comes in and how many times it's in that book. And so if you want to say how many times the word rest comes in Matthew, you click Matthew. If it says five, I don't know what it says. I'm just making up numbers. If it's five, it says 20. It lists all 20 of them and you can read them. Rest is vitally important. It's built in to the fabric of creation. God himself demonstrated it. He gave to his people after they were slaves in Egypt, working, 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 working. When one of the first things they instituted out of slavery was the Sabbath, the day of rest. That was the commandment to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. They didn't have that, that, that load and that burden on them anymore. God wanted them to get the pattern back that he created them for. So maybe we need that reminder. I needed that reminder as we got away. I needed that time away. It, it, was, it was great to not really think too much about responsibilities here in Key Largo, to be in another place, uh, to not have all of that on and just to take a week to put it aside. And, and, and I would encourage you, how can you build into your life rest? A helpful kind of mnemonic device, one of those alliterative things that preachers come up with. I don't know which preacher came up with this, uh, but I've heard it from several in the idea of, of this, this reality that we need to build these patterns into our lives. Um, here, here's the kind of the mnemonic, the, the, alliterative, the alliterative idea. Divert daily, DD, divert daily. Withdraw weekly. Abandon annually thought that was pretty good, really helpful. You know, we think of, yes, there's the, the weekly Sabbath rest. Yes, we, we need that. That should be built in to our regular pattern of the week. By the way, my Sabbath is not Sunday. Sunday is a very busy day in church world with services in the morning and, and different responsibilities and then the evening with our teen groups that meet. So so the sap, for me to say Sunday is the Sabbath, it might be for you, it might be the perfect day to, to withdraw weekly. So find that day where you can do that weekly, but, but also the day to divert daily. You know, we're not made to be every waking minute focused and productive and busy. We just can't run that way. We can't run at that speed. And so daily we need to find something that recharges us. It doesn't have to be, you know, rest in the sense of I'm gonna close my eyes and take a nap, but it can be something that you enjoy doing. Maybe it's, it's exercise, it's a walk. It, for me, I like to go jogging from time to time. And when we were on vacation, one of the things that was very rejuvenating is to take, find a trail and take a hike. Love being outside, being in nature and those sorts of things. Find that thing. Maybe it's reading. Maybe it's gardening. Maybe it's something I'm not even thinking of, uh, but find that thing that daily you can divert and then withdraw weekly and then annually. That's kind of the idea of the vacation. Abandon. It's not just for a few hours, a few minutes every day or, or a few hours every week, but it, it, it's for for an extended period of time to abandon, to, to get yourself out of that situation, to recharge and renew so you can come back into the regular everyday demands of your life, refreshed and ready to tackle them. There's only one thing needed, and remember that the greatest recharging thing we can find isn't just a hobby we like, but it's spending time, like Mary did, at the feet of Jesus. Build that into your rest cycle. There's nothing as rejuvenating as time spent with God. Some people call it a quiet time or a personal devotional time where you might read the Bible or pray or journal or, or read a, a Christian devotional book. Whatever it is, find that time as well. And those, that, that pattern of rest and making the main thing, the one thing that is needed, part of your regular routine, spending time with Jesus. 
I'll almost say, God would say, I can promise you, it'll make a big difference in your productivity. See, we, we've bought the lie that if we just go, 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 we'll be the most productive. God didn't build us that way. You know, God didn't make us to go, go, go. God built rest. He built Sabbath into the patterns of creation. Let's take him up on that and find those places and times and things that allow us to rest and recharge. It will make a difference. That's made a difference for me getting away. And I'm excited to be back and excited for the next phase of ministry here as we go into the summer with Bible school and some other things. We've got National Day of Prayer tomorrow. Real quick, just a reminder, first Thursday in May is always the National Day of Prayer. If you'd like to pray, you can do it anywhere, any, anyhow, any why. That's the beauty of prayer. But we're going to have folks gathering here from 6 a.m. to noon out on the front lawn of our church, just outside the door, right along US 1, where our flagpole is. Um, and we're going to have benches out there. We're going to have guides. You can come. If you want to come and be a part of that with us tomorrow, May 4th, between 6 a.m. and noon, love to have you join us. Always want to encourage you, worship with us Sundays, 9 a.m. We're here and online, so make it a point to find those places that you can connect with other of God's people and be encouraged as you seek to follow him. Well, that's about enough for me. I'm going to go finish this very good cup of coffee and get back to my day. I hope you have a great one, and we'll see you soon.